Hello YouTube! Welcome back to Citizen Tech Talk 2019. Yes, it is. It's 2019, guys. Uh, a new year, a new start, and a completely different level of quality for this channel. Guys, this year I'm trying to make this channel into a professional channel, a channel where we can discuss things uh, in real time in live chats, as well as uh, be discussing things other than just Star Citizen. Uh, I am the face behind all of the videos. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for sticking around to now. Uh, all of you new subscribers, it is massively appreciated that, uh, that you've joined the channel as well. This year is going to be a, a big year for the Citizen Tech Talk, uh, as we're not just doing Star Citizen Talks anymore. We're going to be doing uh, Anthem Talks as well as actual tech talk. Uh, we're going to be discussing uh, new releases of AMD, Intel, as well as NVIDIA as well as uh, talking about the mobile market as well. I'm not going to be doing mobile phone reviews. Uh, I personally find them quite dry and boring. Even if Linus Tech Tips does it, I still find them horrendously boring. A mobile phone's a mobile phone. I don't care how many uh, cameras it has. It's a mobile phone. They pretty much have the same uh, CPU in them, uh, or chip, if you want to call it that, uh, and it's a mobile phone. So I want to discuss actually important stuff, especially for us gamers, uh, and I want to be covering both the low-end, mid-end, and high-end gaming rig uh, kind of discussions. Uh, I will be doing some reviews on parts uh, as soon as we get the Patreon channel up and running. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Patreon, right? It's the big joke at the moment, uh, ripping off uh, actual subscribers for Patreon, as well as the channel owners. So I'm going to be doing something that I saw in a video recently, is offsetting the cost uh, to all of the subscribers. So if you're going to be paying a dollar a month, you're paying a dollar, I'll um, lower your, your cost uh, somehow, some way in a give back. If it's, uh, let's say, a $5 subscription or a $10 subscription, uh, then we can look at offsetting uh, the cost to you in the uh, the algorithm that they've set. So if you want to pay $10 or $5 a month, you'll be paying $5, but you'll actually be paying $4 something, uh, and I'll, I'll cop the rest on the chin. Uh, I want this channel to grow, but I need your support to do so. Guys, I'm that one YouTuber on the internet who's just going to say it how it is without any personal or emotional attachment. Truth, facts, and evidence. Um, I've said that enough times in my videos so far. If you haven't actually watched most of my videos yet, uh, please go back and have a look on our channel um, up in front of you. And um, yeah, go through all the videos from uh, episode one uh, through to the Star Skitsians, as well as uh, the future content moving on from there, including Citizen Con 2018, which it was. Uh, that leads me to today's subject, but before I do that, I'm going to do a little, little segue here, and just going to show you uh, some kind of what I'm going to be doing with the each episode, uh, something different to all the other YouTubers. Uh, I thought this might be um, a, a bit more of a, an opportunity to connect with you guys directly, and that's that's what I want to do. So many YouTubers put out their content, and it's awesome content, and I can name a, a, a list of YouTubers that do fantastic content, but they're not talking to you directly and asking you actual questions. So what I'm going to be doing at the end of each video is reserving um, a few moments to actually go over to a camera uh, that I've got in the background there, which you can't see at the moment. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm going to actually talk to you directly, a, a conclusions wrap up for each episode, basically. Uh, now, guys, it's not the best camera in the world. It's a, a best tech up. Uh, HD 1080p 30 frame a second video camera. Uh, it's all I can afford at the moment, uh, hence why Patreon, uh, if you guys can get on board with that once I launch that, probably in the next episode, uh, you can, and I can buy a nice DSLR uh, and I can show you the receipt for the purchase and the Patreon uh the Patreon money that actually went into it, which is all of it. Um, Patreon's going to be specifically for hardware purchases for the channel, for um, your actual needs uh, to improve my content and to ensure that you guys are actually getting your value adds. And that's the discussion I'll have with you in another video because I've got a massive, massive surprise for you guys. Uh, and uh, I think that's going to be what gets you on Patreon as well, if nothing else. So anyway, guys, just going to show you the transition scene. So as you can see there, so yes, I've got a bald spot. I'm 40. Leave me alone. Um, <laughs> but uh, guys, um, this is uh, the reflections 
uh, part of the episode. So I'll be doing a turnaround of the chair, moving the mic around and uh, talking to the camera behind me. Uh, so yeah, um, I hope feel, hopefully that's going to be something which uh, allows you guys to further connect with me and me connect with you. Uh, social media has become a very <sighs> impersonal place. I want to make it personal again. All right, so cool. 2019, guys, holy hell. I'm 40. Um, don't know about you guys, but when you hit 40, it's pretty scary. Anyway, uh, welcome back to Citizen Tech Talk 2019. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Okay, guys, so remember how I was saying this was going to lead me to this part of the video? Well, this is that part of the video. Sunken Cost Galaxy. Uh, this is Chapter 6, the Fool's Paradise episode, where uh, Blinky ATX has just said it how it needs to be said. He has come forward with the proof, facts, and evidence. Now, until FTR released this video uh, only a few days ago, did I actually uh, know anything about Blinky ATX? Uh, which is, I, I guess, a bit uh, silly of me because I should have been following this and you know been adding all this kind of content into my prior videos. But my prior videos have all been based on my research, my knowledge, and things that I have been hearing from the Star Citizen community, the forums, as well as other third-party sources, which I won't divulge at this stage. Guys, um, I've worked so hard to make sure that I've got it right so far. Um, I have been ratified. Uh, sorry, guys. Fucking fly. Welcome to Australia. Um, yeah, so... Sorry, guys. I, I've, I've just had to say it how it is. Uh, I've had some pretty negative experiences from in the community. I've had really negative experiences when, when dealing with CIG. And I've had negative experiences being told to me by a, a very large group of other people in and outside the community in relation to the inaction that CIG is taking, Chris is taking, uh, Sandy is, is taking. That's all she does, doesn't she? Just take money anyway. Uh, that's personal perspective from me. It's a personal comment. Um, guys, I just want to say it how it is. I don't want to, you know, fluff anyone's pillow. If you're a white knight, I just don't care about you. If you're an SJW, I really don't care about you. If you're somebody uh, who is a current community citizen or a backer, a pledge, whatever you want to call yourself, and you just want to have to hear it finally although you probably don't want to, the way it has to be said, that's my job. And I want both sides of the conversation. I want both uh, both elements in the feedback. Keep it clean, keep it professional, and keep it, uh, just keep it correct. Don't, don't go off on your personal opinions. Don't go off on your uh, your, your negative agendas or, or your cultist bullcrap. Just say it how it is, how you feel about it, in a constructive, adult, professional manner, please. You are more than welcome to continue uh, on on uh, the comments side of things in relation to that in the future, because we need to see both people's perspective. Now, there's two sides of every fence, um, and I want to see the negative feedback or people's belief or your, your perception, understanding. Uh, because that, that matters to me as well. Uh, I'm not a shill. I'm somebody who spent a stupid amount of money on Star Citizen. We all know this. Uh, but I'm also somebody who's also still in. I still have my ships. I still have my account. I'm asking you, in 2019, with what I'm about to show you, is Star Citizen worth the investment any longer? And if not... What can we do as a community to correct this? Um, I've said it in previous videos, and I just I have a feeling 2019 is going to either be a boom year for Star Citizen. God, I hope it will be. I, I really do. But if it's not, guys, we have to live in the cold, harsh reality that it might not. And if it doesn't, and we're all up for thousands of dollars. In some cases, some of you out there, hundreds and thousands of dollars. 
we got to take action. We're, we're, we're the bosses. Yeah, I know what you say, privately owned company, yada, yada. Guess what? They're no longer part of Kickstarter. They're out in the back of the field like that little lost lamb I showed you. They are a private company who can be litigated against for fraud. Anyway, um, I'm going to start the episode. I'm going to take you through some clips. I'm going to stop in between, have some comments and move forward. And none of them are going to be nasty. They're going to be constructive. Okay. All right, guys. So welcome to Citizen Tech Talk once again in 2019, episode one of a new era for Citizen Tech Talk. Enjoy the episode. Okay, guys, I'm going to start with the freelancer discussion within uh, the Blinky video here or the documentary. And um, we're going to just watch, watch through that, that first, first and then I'm going to have some comments. Uh, I'm sure you probably will agree. The fate of Freelancer was removed from Chris's hands well before release due to being over budget and underdeveloped. A tidbit I was given from sources as an indication of how mismanaged the project was, was that the opening cinematic for the original vision of Freelancer cost about $950,000 to produce, near enough a full million. Roberts attempted to allay Freelancer's budget concerns by pitching new games to get more money, projects like Bane and Silverheart. But Microsoft was having none of that robbing Peter to pay Paul nonsense after Starlancer's disappointing sales. I say disappointing, a word used by Eric Peterson in a 2001 interview because it failed to plug a specific financial hole. A specific financial hole, it is alleged, was a major part of the reason Roberts' removal from Digital Anvil during the buyout. Again, this is rumor, but it is corroborated by multiple trusted sources who are at Digital Anvil. It is alleged that Roberts used Microsoft game development money to fund the post-production of the already over-budget Wing Commander movie. Roberts claims the movie budget was close to 20 to 24 million dollars. Other sources cite total costs at about 30 million dollars. It turns out both are actually right. Roberts secured about 20 million dollars from various sources after a Me Fed Italy film fest showing off a test trailer. Fox threw in an additional 2 million. There's a convenient gap of about 7 to 8 million dollars. Considering the movie only made back about $11.6 million, and nearly all that profit bespoke for, Microsoft was none too pleased to find a several million dollar gap after Roberts asked for more money to complete Freelancer and other projects in 2000. One of the big stipulations of the buyout by Microsoft was the complete removal of Roberts from the company, and the barring of him from ever entering the office again. The consultant credit was merely a contractual ghost. Ever plucky, Roberts did show up once late in development, and stories tell of a fun night on 6th Street, but end with that night of past reminiscences. Once again, there is no public evidence of these events, but this alleged story is consistent between trusted sources. Okay guys, in relation to Freelancer, um, robbing Peter to pay Paul seems to be uh, Chris Roberts' modus operandum. Uh, it's something he continues to do. Uh, two bank loans and $46 million sell-off and the uh, European office putting 10% away too. Mm. Um, disappointing uh, being a very, very politically correct statement in relation to a massive chunk of money that went missing. Seven, eight million dollars is not a little bit of money. Uh, and if it is a little bit of money to you who are listening to this now, can you please adopt me? Uh, or, I don't know, sign me into a trust fund. Because seven to eight million dollars would set me up and, God, my whole family up for the rest of our lives. So it's not it's not a small amount of money to start with, okay? Um, now we're talking relating this to Star Citizen, the Cayman Islands, uh, at the moment where all their money is getting flushed through, yeah, uh, and then asking for more money from uh, Microsoft <coughs> to do further works like Freelancer, yeah. Um, I'm just trying to put across to you guys, where's $211 million gone so far? Anyway, let's go to the next part of the video. As far as the film director Roberts, he wasn't kicked out of Hollywood due to tragedy or bad luck, but inability and hubris. Everything he knew about filmmaking he learned from just watching movies, or the Wing Commander games. No film school education at all. The Wing Commander movie itself was a $30 million film school for Roberts that saw numerous production issues, script problems, and a very cold reception. There are multiple accounts of what happened, from Roberts himself and others involved in the film's production, and they all speak of bad communication, competing ideas, and a lack of focus. 
There was some forward thinking, but that was more about merchandise. Fact is, aside from an early Fox Silver Surfer project that was quickly mooted, he was never allowed to direct after the critical and commercial failure of his movie, and he was essentially blacklisted from Hollywood after Kevin Costner won his breach of contract court case, setting new legal contractual precedent and standards by losing a lawsuit over oral obligation, and an industry that loves to say, love you, love to work with you, will not endear you to that industry and or community. As to Roberts' producer history, it is my opinion, and one I've been unable to find any relevant Hollywood contacts to confirm or deny, that Roberts' producer roles had less to do with his abilities, or inabilities in this case, and more to do with Ortwin Framer's ability to find projects, to sink retroactively fraudulent tax evasion money from Germany's VIP manifolds that the German government eventually clamped down hard on in 2007. Ascendant Pictures lists 16 films to their credit. But Roberts was only involved in half of those projects. The other half was all Ortwin and the other Ascendant partners. Roberts promoted during early Star Citizen slideshow talks that he successfully got $750 million in funding for film projects. But of the nearly 260 ish million spent on movies that Roberts was involved in, they only made back under $200 million. We will further address the Roberts and Ortwin partnership in a future video, as it relates to what happened to the other $500 million. So Chris Roberts also has a bit of a history of gross incompetence, uh, hubris, uh, and, he, and he, he learned how to make movies by watching them, as he learned how to make Star Citizen by not learning from Freelancer, just the question I'm asking, uh, feedback please. He got blacklisted, uh, and he worked for fraudsters. German fraudsters, yeah? Clearing house. Uh, it's called a money laundering house. The German government finally caught up with them. Chris has related himself and tied himself in with some pretty dodgy people in past. And um, where's the money now? Where's the product now? I'm sorry, guys. I know it hurts, but it is what it is. Um, anyway, moving on to the next part of the video. There is a murky hole in the Roberts Hollywood history between the decline of Ascendant Pictures and the 2012 launch of the Star Citizen project. As stated in Chapter 2, Roberts attempted to rub elbows with celebrities in passing with his luxury car rental company out of John Wayne Airport. This corroborated anecdote from sources makes passable sense. John Wayne is known for being the airport of choice for celebrities looking to avoid the congested public of LAX and celebrities are fond of luxury cars that they are not completely responsible for. Much like the stereotype of the waiter dropping a script on the plate of a Hollywood bigwig, Robert sought a new Patreon by virtue of salesmanship. However, that never panned out, as the business allegedly bankrupted due to Roberts' partner running off with the money the business made, leaving debt and other contractual obligations. Roberts would not sell another luxury service for about six years. In other activities, Roberts credits a Chief Creative Officer role at Blink Media International from 2008 to 2011, who is considered at this time a dissolved company. What I've been told was Blink Media was one of many ambitious media marketing companies that disappeared into a trust after distributing a few financial golden parachutes. Reportedly, Roberts was not issued one of these golden parachutes. It's also reported, and something I was told during my time as an investor at CIG, that Blink Media was one of the early promised angel investors that would provide the rest of the funding that the Star Citizen project needed. Suffice to say, the dissolvement of Blink Media put that promise to rest. As to any other Robert's activities during that time, they are scattered, uncorroborated, and honestly not fit for public discussion. But I give you again the account of the one person who knew him best at the time. Okay, so Chris is a dodgy rental car salesman. Um, what can I say about that? I don't know what to say about that. Um, he's got a silver tongue. The guy knows how to, to talk up a storm. He is a marketing mogul. Um, he knows how to get connected to your emotional side of things. But he doesn't follow through on anything. He doesn't communicate any needs. He doesn't actually understand that throwing his hands around and moving things around and imagining things in his own head isn't what people are actually taking into account of their understanding of what he's going on with, uh, on about. But anyway, $200 million has gone missing in my eyes. Um, the company Blink Media went out of business. He was like the guy running it. Um, and he didn't even get a 
Golden Parachute didn't even get a, a severance package. He got kicked from the company. Clearly, he was the person causing all the trouble. <laughs> Just saying. How can we trust somebody who we know doesn't finish things, gets fired from every single job he's ever had, wants to be a Hollywood movie star, producer, guy. Um, Wing Commander 4 was a very clear-cut mess, uh, and it was basically a movie with a game stuck in between the scenes. What's Star Citizen right now? What's Squadron 42 right now? Ask yourself the question. I'm not going to answer it for you. Guys, Star Citizen is a murky, muddy, deep hole that everyone is stuck down right now. We have put all our money in to a fraudster, a con man, a silver-tongued lizard. The jig's up. Star Citizen, while CIG and Chris Roberts is at the helm, is never going to actually come out. We might have a playable project this year, and that's what I'm hoping for. At least 2019, give us something we can actually play around in. If not anywhere near the game that we were first promised, at least something for our money. Because at this stage... Uh, no matter what anyone says, three OCS, 60 frames a second. It's the minimum standard, guys. It's it's not actually a, a preset standard. It's not a standard that I would expect for such a multi-million dollar production. Um, coffee machines, pool tables, plastic bloody models, uh, hydraulic doors in an office. Yeah. Sorry, guys, I know it's hard to hear, but it's the truth. So, yeah, and, and this stuff's backing it up. So anyway, um, Chris Roberts, dodgy, incompetent fool. I don't know what to, else to say about him. He's, he's not somebody of great credibility. He's somebody that wants to be uh, the next big wig in Hollywood and you know get his place back with all the, the big wigs and rub shoulders and, and get a reputation for himself. I think the guy might be a delusional psychopath um, or a bit touched in the head because what he's doing is it's all over the place. There is no direction. There is no process. There is no focus on anything he's doing. It's just, oh, I want to do this today. Uh, I'll do that tomorrow. Oh, the money. Uh, just just put it in the Cayman Islands. We'll sort it out later. Um, I'll take my 8, 9, 10, 15, 20, 46 million dollar cut. You, none of you will know about it because I'm the boss. I don't answer to anybody. All the people that would have had overhead on him and had position on him left the production already uh, in the last two years. It's a sinking ship, guys. The evidence is there. Don't ignore it anymore, please. Um, there's still time to fix this, though. There is still time to fix this. We have other game developers out there. If we as a community lobby the actual other game developers out there, guess what? Eventually, someone's going to stick their hand up and go, I'll take on this train wreck. Yeah, and it might be Ubisoft. It might be EA. I know. But will it get finished? Will it get finished in a quarter of the time that it's going to probably get finished at this stage, if at all? Chris has missed the boat. Uh, he, he has squandered mil hundreds of millions of dollars on nothing at this stage. All of that kind of game engine stuff and all the other stuff. Great. Okay, awesome. From someone who has such a historical uh, longevity in the gaming and development of gaming industry, how come he stuffed up so much? Moving on to the next part of the video anyway, guys. Yeah, so Chris, is, Chris said, well, do you think we could maybe go to Kickstarter or something. He, he kind of felt it was a little risky. Um, and I said, well, 
you know, your, your what he what he does is pretty unique. Nobody else can kind of do what he does. So if no one if no one appreciates you for Star Citizen, then I'm sure you'll get a job. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to do that, I'm sure somebody's going to give you a job if you don't want to go back into film and you really would like to go back into games. So. Well, at least his wife's looking after him. You can at least get a job, Chris, because you're a bum. That's basically what she was saying, but trying to be really supportive at the same time. See, Sandy Gardner's next model, yeah? She's used to living a very high life and uh, having a lot of money to play with. Chris was a car rental salesman. Yeah. Um... Sandy, put on some weight, though, sweetheart. You are sickly thin. Uh, I know the modeling industry wants you to look that that way, that that skeleton with skin on it way. Sandy, you're going to look a lot more attractive with a bit of body on you. And I don't mean be chunky. I'm just saying eat healthily, eat normally, and put some normal body mass index back on, please. It's horrible to watch you on Around the Verse. Uh, and whatever other episodes Star Citizen are doing with you on it, uh, seeing your, your skeleton come through your chest, uh, let alone the bones in your face and your jawline. Uh, it's not pretty. Put some weight on, be healthy for, for your, your own sake. sake. Uh, if you're getting into movies, fantastic. Put some weight on, though, please, for God's sake. Chris, you're not being a very good partner either by letting her be that thin. Anyway, it's a personal statement from me, aside from Star Citizen. All right, let's move on to the next part. Welcome back to recent history. With the successful funding of the Star Citizen project, Roberts had to set up a studio to make his game. Austin was familiar ground, the largest video game industry hub outside of Southern California, once home of Origin Systems and Digital Anvil. The timing for recruiting talent was just right. Lightbox Interactive had just closed up shop after shipping their last game, Starhawk, and there were longtime industry vets looking for work. While a studio headed by Roberts' longtime friend and manager, Eric Peterson, was established, Roberts decided that he would not come back to Austin. Instead, Roberts established an office in Santa Monica, on the boardwalk near the ocean. And ironically, sorry, appropriately, their next-door neighbor was the also kickstarted Ouya. Ouya. Over time, the Santa Monica office began stripping development responsibility from Austin, becoming the figurative spearhead of the game's development, where every core department was within a stroll of Roberts' desk. It's no secret that the project was nebulously undefined prior to the GDC Austin presentation. And since then, theme and influence are a potpourri of everything and anything. What's been stated is that the setting is influenced by ancient Roman history, notably Imperial Rome. Star Wars returns as an influence because this is space opera, and of course, the Firefly fantasy, and the specific co-opting of the phrase, Earth. But for all the lore and fiction, there isn't a game to critique yet. But there are over a thousand promotional videos to browse, and the commercials for spaceships are a bit more on the nose. Here's 2001. Here's Top Gear. Here's a Ford truck commercial. Here's Lord of War's intro. Here's Grand Tour. In fact, most of these eight familiar car commercials throughout the years, and rightfully so, they're intended to sell you the idea of owning spaceships. One might say Roberts has some experience in selling people with money to spend on luxury vehicles. I hope the irony is not lost on you. So, Star Citizen Fun Fact. In the Ford Truck commercial homage, Roberts wanted to get Dennis Leary, the comedian actor who voiced the actual Ford Truck commercials, to voice his. Leary wanted millions, so instead they got Lance Henriksen for quite a few thousands. Roberts also wanted the actual Jeremy Clarkson for the Top Gear homage, who again asked for millions. I don't know who did the voice, probably somebody cheaper, but just so you understand, Roberts has nearly spent millions on spaceship commercials, and potentially more if he got the talent he wanted at the price they asked for. So Roberts has marginal ability to sell cars, and demonstrated ability to sell spaceships, but what about his abilities to communicate ideas? So as you can see, um, Chris Roberts is a master marketer. I'll give him that. I'm not going to knock him for being excellent with code, and I'm not going to knock him for being silver-tongued and very good at marketing people emotionally, psychologically, and make promises. Now, if you know anything about marketing like I do, because I come from an executive marketing background myself before I became a teacher. Um, it, it's all about telling you guys what you want to hear, what we know is going to funnel you into our purchasing cycle. 
you no no marketer cares about the audience. Marketers have lied about multitudes of products all over the world for a very long time. Snake oil salesman, at least they got snake oil, right, to sell. It's a tangible product. Just saying, Chris. Um, Chris Roberts, uh, silver-tongued liar, lizard, con man, scumbag. It's just becoming apparent, I'm sure, in this video already. I hope so. Anyway, uh, let's move on. Roberts wasn't and still isn't much of an artist and arguably not a great writer. He is a code monkey, and by most accounts from sources, he still is a decent one. However, without the skills to express ideas visually, the medium he prefers, Roberts falls back on a technique that has trapped many muted creatives before him, references to other material. You've probably noticed Roberts is fairly active with his hands when he describes Star Citizen. This is because he's trying to create a visual representation, but those skillless hands fail him, and so it becomes a collage of images only he fully sees, and he attempts to aid them with stuttering explanations of references to other existing material. Unfortunately, this style relies heavily on references, and at a point references turn into imitation. While Star Citizen is a nebulous concept, we have a slightly more concise Squadron 42 to inspect. A sci-fi adventure starring you, a hotshot pilot in a long-shot war against giant alien German barbarians, episodically. Again, there's no finished game to critique, but there are videos and presentations to sift through. They focus on tech and filming motion capture. For now, we focus on the filming. We've established that Roberts had no actual film education, and the bigger the production budget, the bigger the problems. We approached the Eye of the Storm, where old Chris Roberts, the once video game developer, and new Chris Roberts, the Hollywood outsider, meet, and potentially cause history to rhyme once again. One of the earliest stretch goals of the whole Star Citizen project was motion-captured actors to perform characters for animators to use in Squadron 42. And with the gushing spindle top in funding, Roberts had the ability to cast more experienced actors to play character roles. Celebrity actors are no stranger to video games, and typically do voice acting, or VO meaning voiceover. Then you have mocap actors acting animations, and through the magic of technology, you melt the two performances together as best you can. Roberts made a decision that the voice actors would also perform their own motion capture, motion, facial, and performance. Let's look and see who they got for Squadron 42 proper. Hold on to your butts. Gary Oldman of Darkest Hour and Fifth Element lives in LA. Mark Hamill of Star Wars lives in LA. Mark Strong of The Long Firm and Sherlock Holmes lives in London. John Rhys Davies of Indiana Jones and Lord of the Rings lives in the UK. Jack Houston of Boardwalk Empire, soon to be Ben Hur and fucking Outlander? Oh, as a fun side note, the Outlander IP is owned by Roberts. Sources say he tried to do the Lucas thing once again with toys and marketing, like he did with the Wing Commander movie. Your lack of Outlander toys in your childhood speaks of the success of that. Moving on. Ben Mendelsohn of Animal Kingdom, Dark Knight Rises, and Rogue One lives in Australia. Andy Serkis of Lord of the Rings lives in London. Harry Treadaway of Penny Dreadful lives in the UK. Liam Cunningham, Game of Thrones, lives in Ireland. Rona Mitra of The Practice and Boston Legal lives in London. Ian Duncan, a relatively unknown, lives in the UK. Sophie Wu of Kick-Ass 1 and 2 lives in the UK. Gemma Whelan of Game of Thrones and various video game voiceovers lives in London. Craig Fairbass of Cliffhanger and various Call of Duty game voiceovers lives in the UK. And finally, Gillian Anderson of The X-Files lives in London. Oh, and Sandy Gardner, welcome to the jungle and the perception, lives in LA. Okay, guys, so you've seen the, the star-studded cast uh, for Squadron 42 and the, let's say, $100 million it cost for them to do their mocap. Mm. Yeah, really, really expensive, that stuff. You've don't, not just got the actors, you've got to pay for the time, and you've got to just pay for everything. It's insane. Um, we'll go into that further uh, in more depth in the video shortly. If you notice in the background, uh, Squadron 42 showing the names swinging upwards and 2016. It's 2019, guys. Sorry, but are you starting to see it's a scam? Are you starting to see that uh, the, the White Knights and the SJWs and the Cultists and the Star Skitsians are real? Are you starting to realize that what Blinky's saying is dead set spot on facts, proof, and evidence 
of everything I've said on this channel to date. Anyway, let's move on to the next part of the video. To get the obvious out of the way, Old Wing Commander FMB alumni Mark Hamill and John Reese davis They've worked with Roberts before, and both Mark and John have gone on record their fond memories of their experiences with Roberts. A what you would call fair deal was probably struck, but certainly their rates have gone up since the new Star Wars and Lord of the Rings movies. You pay actors within the ballpark of what they're worth, unless they willingly accept that for a small indie budget the likes of $10 million and below, that they are there for art's sake and Star Citizen at above $210 million is no indie budget and is not art. The actors themselves are only part of the cost. The actual shooting and performance capture can cost a lot more. Roberts may not be building stage sets, but new technology doesn't come cheap, something we'll explore in a later video. But in summary, Imaginarium Studios for at least three months, 100 plus days, with this cast. How much footage is there to shoot? This much. Four of the eight principal cast do not live in London, and even those that do are probably nowhere near the facilities to simply commute from their homes. No one rents apartments or trailers on their own dime for a major production like Squadron 42. That bill is paid by the producers. Transportation and catering too, because these are more than likely 8-10 to 10 hour daily shoots. Any less would be an utter waste of time and money. You pay actors for sticking around even when you're not shooting until you are absolutely finished with them, or it's explicit in the contract that they can pursue other projects while they wait on you to call upon them. For one of the earliest Squadron 42 promotional videos, Roberts featured Gary Oldman's motion, performance, and facial capture. This is what passes as excellence in the mind of Chris Roberts. That was painful, in my opinion. This is Gary Oldman, Oscar winner Gary Oldman, with awards and nominations as long as your driveway. It takes a special kind of director to wrangle such a bad performance out of Gary Oldman. Sources say that when Oldman asked what kind of person he was portraying, Roberts gave little direction, offering one tidbit of material. Bishop is over 100 years old. Roberts tends to rely on good actors to make bad material passable, and this performance that so much was spent on and possibly nothing will result in is the outcome. It was rumored, and specifically hinted, that Oldman might not only be done with his shoots as early as July 2016, but might also be completely out of the project. Of course, the most recent Squadron 42 trailer has Oldman's character fairly front and center, essentially answering those rumors. But like the spaceship commercials, we don't know if Oldman's full performance will make it to Squadron 42, or if they're essentially marketing material. We shall have to wait and see. I love how Blinky says, um, takes a very special producer director to bring out such a bad performance in an actor what um is chris doing is he that delusional that he thinks he's doing a fantastic job and everyone is actually getting really pissed off with him uh as i was saying you know with with the cost involved the catering the catering itself would cost a crap ton of money the accommodations let alone the pay, the mocap, the the post processing of all of that. Uh, I'm I'm going with about hundred million dollars, guys. Which means half the money we put into this project has been wasted on Chris Roberts' own little delusional. I can't even put words to it. Twenty nineteen Star Citizen, nah. 2016, Squadron 42, nah, 2019, no, nothing, we've got nothing, we keep buying ships, we keep believing, uh, we keep having people white knight, SJW, um, go skitsy, go full skitsy, skitsians, uh, and, and what does it prove, when, if and when this project fails, everybody who has spent a stupid amount of money in this, is going to hate themselves because they got sucked in by a con man, Chris Roberts. I have spent a stupid amount of Australian dollars on this game myself. Okay? I'm one of those people that are going to hate myself forever if this project fails. I have to have it succeed. You have to have it succeed. If not by Chris Roberts and CIG, by another developer. You're starting to get my point now. Money's been squandered. There's no one putting overheads in. Anyone that was with the company that was putting overheads in has left. 
yeah. Anyway, let's move on to the next part of the video. There's a lot to unravel from Roberts' past actions and history, like pulling at a thread on a loose sweater, focusing only on his body of work as a metric of his abilities and experience, and the success of those metrics, there are a few conclusions that I come to. The first among them is that the current Chris Roberts can't produce a product unless he's supervised by a boss with power over him. Roberts outgrew smaller, less ambitious games like Time of Lore and Bad Blood quickly, and was under EA supervision starting with the middle of Strike Commander. Wing Corps was the last time Roberts was directly involved with a game until its completion. EA wanted to rein him in. Microsoft booted him from Digital Anvil three years before its freelancer shipped, and Star Citizen is nearing year seven of an originally two to three year development process with no completion date in sight, and only the threat of a minimum, minimum viable, viable product, product being delivered. He's the boss now, but being his own boss has done nothing but bring him eventual failure, and anyone who has worked with Roberts directly in the past who could have reined him in has since walked off the project. Secondly, Roberts has apparently not learned from his mistakes. Wing 4 should have been a wake-up call as to what the story-centric space sim can reasonably accomplish, but budget concerns are once again beating in the background of Star Citizen. Remember, this is a man who, with no formal film education aside from FMV games, made arguably the biggest flop of video game movie history, and at the same time struggled against his lofty ambitions with Freelancer before being given the boot. And here he is again doing it all over again with Squadron 42 and Star Citizen. The best analogy I can think of is that he's attempting a Super Wing Commander 4 movie and a Super Freelancer game at the same time. In an interview with Penny Arcade, he said he wished somebody sat him down and told him to focus on a select few things when he directed the Wing Commander movie, and with a project of the nebulous scope of Star Citizen, that would be useful. He is once again a man of divided attention, and like the old First Nation proverb says, a man who chases two rabbits catches neither. Finally, I believe Roberts never let go of the Hollywood dream. The lure of directing A-list actors in mocap suits proved too tempting to resist, and he is directing. Ostensibly, Aaron Roberts is the one directing the development of story and mechanics of Squadron 42, but why would Chris fly nearly halfway around the world to direct the mocap when it would have been cheaper to have a good second unit director do it for him? The opinion I arrive at is Chris never let go of that dream of directing famous actors in his projects that he birthed in college. He has to be there. Those moments of being important, of being essential, in the mix of it, or at least the illusion of those things, are branded deeply into the Robert's identity, and who he imagines himself to be. The Hollywood sign may not be inside of the new CIG LA office, but Roberts knows where it is at all times. When he returns to the top of the world, not if in his mind, it will be as if he never left. His head buried deep in his dream of returning to Hollywood adoration and lifestyle, Roberts might not see the end of the runway in time. Speaking of chasing big dreams off a short pier, next chapter, we'll see what Chris's better half, and the alleged other Hollywood anchor, is up to in her pursuit of a much more clearly defined, but questionable means dream of Hollywood stardom and lifestyle. Okay guys, final conclusion to the video. Chris Roberts is a crook. Uh, that's my opinion. Uh, I believe that we've all been swindled out of all of our money and that he wants to be a Hollywood guy again, really with no hope and, uh, and, and prayer. He has pretty much been evicted from Hollywood. He is an outcast. He's an outsider. He uh, is trying to reinvent the wheel and unfortunately the wheel's already been made. He's trying to cut back relevance. He's using our money and our good faith and our hope and our prayers and our need for this game to become a game. It's still a project. Let's just keep focused on the truth. Guys, I desperately want Star Citizen to become everything it can be and more. I want those original promises to be reinstated. We're going to have to get another developer in at this stage. I'm sorry, it is what it is, I'll keep saying it guys, but here's the truth, there's the facts, Blinky, he, he nailed it on the head, that's all proof, facts and evidence, none of it's speculation, and then the areas where he does say speculation, he puts up the eye with the coat and the hat, the rest are pure facts, proof and evidence, which are undeniable. Guys, I hope you understand what I'm trying to do for the ch for my channel. What I'm trying to do for all of us backers that have been shortchanged. 
um, to to make people wake up and realise that the Star Citizen experience that we want, it's not going to happen while Chris Roberts is around. Nor Sandy Gardner or Derek Smart or any of those morons that are left. All the people that were going to make sure this project came to completion left already. You've got Chris running around with our money and throwing it into the Cayman Islands bank accounts. There's no extradition law for the Cayman Islands. There's no tax law for the Cayman Islands. It's that money just goes where it goes and that's it. You don't ever see it again. There's already discrepancies uh, in the, uh, the, the finances that has been brought up with the games this episode. Uh, and um, I've done reference to that as well. And if you want, I can uh, go into further depth about those financial discussions and the Cayman Islands discussions in another video. But for today, guys, thank you so much for sticking by me. Uh, please, if you like the video, obviously a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, tell me why with your thumbs down. I am developing this channel. I am not a pro. I want to make sure that this channel becomes pro but I need your help to become a pro. Please help me get the message out, say things the way they need to be said about everything we'll be talking about on the channel. If you guys have some other awesome ideas or stuff that you want me to talk about in a cold, hard, proof, facts and evidence way, bring it up in the comments below, please. Um, guys, it's 2019. Let's make this year a boomer of a year. Uh, let's make this channel what it needs to be and that's the one youtube channel on the internet that is not going to subscribe or prescribe to any of the shill like behavior from some of the other tech channels uh, as well as any other people that don't want the truth to be told because they're going to get death threats and get fearful that someone's going to hurt them i'm in australia i'm, I'm down the bottom of the planet i've already had death threats and, and all that crap already from within the community prior to this there's nothing i have to lose but I have, and you have a massive amount to gain from now, is that we get transparency, we get accountability, and we get answerability from the affecting parties, and we actually take the appropriate affirmative and uh, um, supportive action of each other against the people that are ripping us off. We're being defrauded. He has a history of working for fraudsters. Come on, guys. He's, he's a delusional mental case who even says in his own videos, call me crazy, because he is. He's delusional, all right? Uh, he, he's a, an older man in his 50s, got grey hair, uh, on those good old 1960s sideburn things going on. He, he, he's trying to grip for relevance in 2019. As uh, Blinky said, almost seven years in production, and what do we have? Let's take affirmative action, let's correct the rot, let's get rid of Chris Roberts and Sandy Garner and Derek Smart and Craig Clinton and all the other corrupt elements of CIG, uh, get another developer to come in, take over, and finish the project and have at least something. We don't want to have Freelancer again. Freelancer 2.0. That's where we're going, guys. Another developer inevitably is going to come in and finish this. Mark my words in another video. Again. You know I'm right. I know I'm right. I haven't been wrong on the channel yet. Please, just get past your personal preferences if you have any, against me, I know who you are in the community, you know who I am, right? Yeah, we already have that well established. I don't care anymore. What I care about is helping everybody else but you Star Skitsians get the game that they want. And have people have a fair go, because Australia's all about the fair go, right? Equal opportunity, all that type of jazz. Well, Australia, I'm from Australia. So let's put it down the line. Let's say 2019 is the year to either make Star Citizen what it needs to be by holding these people, and it's not just Chris Roberts. Everyone keeps on saying, oh, it's only Chris Roberts. No, it's not just Chris Roberts. It's everybody involved at CIG. 
You know how they can correct the issue? Quit. Most of them are from university, first job ever, but they've got their tenure. If they've got 12 months or more, they've got tenure. Enough to get another job somewhere else at a bigger development company, yeah? Stop shilling for Chris Roberts, Sandy Gardner, and whoever else you could possibly think of within CIG. They don't care about you. They never will. They care about the money, and Chris only cares about his delusions of grandeur. Becoming a Hollywood superstar, producer, director all over again. He never was in the first place. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. 2019, big year. Merch store will be up soon enough. Patreon, I'll be launching very soon. Uh, and if you guys have another alternate platform to Patreon for me uh, that I can start heading down and start trend setting with, I'd really appreciate your input on that, please, as well. Um, just thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for continuing to um, hear me out. And um, in the comments, for the most part, if you don't even agree with me, still be constructive and helpful. And that's what I really appreciate. Those of you guys that are agreeing with me, you're also being very constructive as well and very professional. I massively appreciate that as well, obviously. We need to talk this out as adults, as gamers, as enthusiasts in such a specialized program. Let's talk it out, for better or for worse, but let's not get personal. Cool? Anyway, guys, peace out. I'll catch you in the next video.